Fiji, like many island countries in the Pacific, is susceptible to extreme weather events, which are worsened by climate change. The frequency and intensity of cyclones, floods and droughts are changing and together with rising sea levels, represent an increasing threat to vulnerable communities. With these adverse weather events severely affecting the Fiji Islands Group, there is now a need to plan, cost, design and implement climate resilient infrastructure to help reduce the country's vulnerability to climate change. For the Water Authority of Fiji, you know, the, the climate change uh, impacts is, is, is a reality for us. Yeah? Basically, uh, be climate resilient in the next five to ten years. We will either need to uh, retrofit the current uh, uh, water treatment plants, so we invest in climate resilient products uh, to retrofit our water treatment plants, or we need to relocate up upstream yeah? uh, to ensure that we are not affected by these saltwater intrusion that are coming in. Fiji's first National Adaptation Plan, NAP, which outlines the country's priorities to adapt to climate change, was launched in 2018. The NAP was established with the support of the National Adaptation Plan Global Network and contains 160 adaptation actions. To estimate the cost of these measures, a NAP costing methodology was developed by Fiji's Ministry of Economy and the Climate Change and International Cooperation Division. Early in 2022, representatives from several government bodies convened in Suva to pilot the NAP costing methodology with the support of the European Union-funded Global Climate Change Alliance Plus Scaling Up Pacific Adaptation Project. Integrating our mainstream climate change adaptation into national and sub-national development planning process is an important aspect of the work of the climate change and International Cooperation Division. We therefore develop and deploy um, the necessary methodologies or tools so that our sector line ministries who are implementing arms are able to uh, implement projects better on the ground. In participating in the NAP costing methodology training, the Fiji Roads Authority is learning how to apply the tool to cost future climate resilient jetties. Fiji Roads Authority has identified and assessed the conditions of three existing jetties Nambawalu, Natovi and Savusavu, which are nearing the end of their useful working life. These jetties are facing challenges with accommodating existing maritime traffic, high repair costs and adverse weather events. Recently there is a lot of uh, changes in the you know the adverse weather conditions that we are experiencing. You, you can tell for the last five or ten years it's a huge storms and cyclones that actually damaging most of these structures. We have a, a, a consistency in place right now, you know, based from their own studies, they will come up with a, a proposal on whether it's going to be located on the existing location based on the effect of wave, tidal and other natural weather conditions or they have to they study on looking at other uh, sites that may more more calm, more suitable to build the jetty that will be more resilient to any future you know, effect of uh, natural weather. The Natovi jetty, one of the country's busiest jetties, was severely impacted by tropical cyclone Winston, a Category 5 cyclone in 2016. This halted maritime services which also affected businesses operated by community members at the jetty. The Water Authority of Fiji is also exploring new plans to build more robust water systems that are better adapted to ongoing climate-related challenges. So just giving you an example, you know, for uh, looking at the uh, rise in sea levels. Rise in sea levels is causing a lot of uh, saltwater intrusion into our infrastructure, wastewater, 
and also water. So I'll give you an example. Uh, so for our water treatment plants that are stationed close to the uh, coastal areas, yeah, there's been uh, <clears throat> um, basically signs of saltwater intrusion that are coming in upstream. Yeah? You know, we need to probably uh, treat uh, uh, this uh, salt water more, you know, meaning more in terms of chemical uh, uh, costs and so on. Yeah? Uh, secondly, when you're looking at uh, continuous heavy rainfalls throughout, uh, especially in Suva, what happens there are landslides that happens uh, uh, and it takes away majority of uh, or some of our major pipelines or bulk lines there that supply raw water from our catchment areas to our treatment plants. Yeah? So that's been happening a, a bit more frequent now, uh, especially in the Suva no sorry corridor. Uh, looking at prolonged uh, drought, uh, dry spells, you know, uh, before uh, they use, it normally runs for uh, three to four months, now it's getting to five months, six months. Yeah? So some of our water sources, especially in the Western Division and in the Northern Division are drying up. Okay, so we will need to look for other sources that, uh, you know, during dry, uh, dry spells, uh, there's enough water for us to uh, extract and, and, and to provide for customers. Yeah? You know, we are, we are fortunate that we are part of this um, uh, NEP, the National Adaptation uh, uh, Plan uh, Costing Methodology Exercise for us to properly uh, capture the cost of becoming climate resilient uh, in, in, in the future. So, uh, you know, that will assist us in terms of uh, accurately costing, you know, uh, uh, to be uh, for a water, for water authority to become uh, climate resilient. Uh, water utility in the future. We have to ensure that our infrastructure is uh, climate resilient so that we can reduce uh, direct losses and reduce the indirect uh, costs of uh, disruption.